What's happening guys? 1966 Plymouth Fury, but this will probably apply to a ton of different Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, C body, A body, who knows what else. The issue was of course the clock was no longer working. As you can see it is now working. Um, here's what I found to be the problem. Careful. Uh, to test it, you know, you'll put your positive on the blade on the back and your negative will go on that little, this little guy right there. That's how you'll test it to see if it can be, you know, if you can do something with it. But the issue was underneath here. The solder had broken free from, you know, that's, you know, the blade that connects to the wiring harness in the car. And then that down there where you see there was already a little bit of solder on it. It had broken free from the little post that's underneath there. So all I did was fit it back together. It was a little tricky and then solder it. You know, you'll have to learn how to solder if you don't know how to or take it to someone who can. And... That's all there is to it. Now, I've hear, I've heard that it's recommended to put maybe just a little bit of 3-in-1 oil on the gears in there. You know, just a little bit, not much. Because as you can see, this is pretty intricate and pretty ancient technology. So uh, if you can get yours working, you should be happy to do so because... They're very expensive to get new ones or used ones or new old stock ones. Oh my God, you're talking hundreds of dollars if it's a new one or new old stock. So if you can repair yours, that's likely what happened to it. That right there had just broken off. Hopefully that's all that happened. Because that's all I did with mine. And that was all I had to do to fix it. Uh, see my previous videos on how to remove it. It's a little tricky. I'll show you a little bit of uh, briefness here. Hold on. All right, I did a previous video on how to remove the bezel down here, and it's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing that's slightly tricky is the, uh, the adjustment knob for the clock. You have to use the teensiest little flathead screwdriver to take that knob off. You'll see a little slotted screw that is itty bitty inside of it. So that's how you take that off. And then you can take the, you know, take the bezel off. But to get the clock out, it wasn't a matter of just unscrewing it and pulling it out because there was, uh, I guess it's a light. Yeah, I would assume so. There was a light, I assume, from the clock see the clock is lit also so light from the clock is also illuminating the ashtray which i thought was kind of neat so um so yeah that's where the bulbs are you know for the clock and here's your positive connector for the clock it was pretty difficult to remove but you just have to really work with it you know it's just a, a spade connector you just have to you just have to work with it to get it off of there uh, but up in, you know, that there's a that little, um, I don't know what you'd call it, but little channel that was guiding light to the cigarette lighter is a little post kind of thing. Okay, here is the housing for the clock. All right, I think I've just figured it out here. See down on the bottom there, that is to do nothing more than allow light to shine into the cigarette lighter. But if you pry those little tongs up, you'll be able to get this little, I don't know, fitting, whatever it is, out of there so that the clock can come out. I just, I just figured this out just now because this goes, whoops. It's attached to the housing right there and it pokes through right there. Of course, I didn't figure that out until uh, a few minutes later. So now we both learned something. 
Uh, to get the clock out of there, you'll have to remove this first. Like so. Like so. See if so. If you bend the tongs upward, you can get this out of there, and the clock will come right out. So there you go. Anyway, uh, make sure your light bulbs are working, and you can also see inside of there. If you see there, all your wiring for your radio, uh, your controller for your air conditioning and ventilation is all over here. You can get a look at wiring and whatnot to see, you know, if everything's working properly. So, anyway, you get a good view of everything. And I'm also going to have to replace my headlight uh, controller connector. Look at that. It's all melted and nasty because that little connector was loose and was arcing in there and, and causing a problem. So I hope to God I can find that uh, piece for sale somewhere. I have no idea. I haven't even started looking yet. Anyway, check out other videos about this car. We got all kinds of stuff, the things we're doing to it, and upgrades, fix ups, modifications, whatnot, driving it around. 66 Plymouth Fury, also known as a C body Chrysler, as far as the uh, generation, you know, of the car. Anyway, that's it. Y'all have a great day. We'll see y'all later.